dive into history's depths where America's slavery roots are entrenched. From the colonial era to the antebellum period, a grim epoch unfolds. It's an era marked by forced labor, profound suffering, and the debasement of enslaved Africans and their descendants. Such was the harsh reality of a time gone by, a stark contrast to the freedom we cherish today. Picture this, a world divided, where freedom was a luxury few could afford. A time when the color of one's skin determined one's fate. This was the era of slavery, a blight on the pages of human history. Yet amidst the atrocities, stories of hope and resilience emerged. Men and women, bound by chains, fought against their oppressors, refusing to let their spirits be shackled. Their courage, their resistance, transformed them from victims to heroes. Today we remember them not as slaves, but as warriors. We honor their struggle, their sacrifices, and their indomitable will. Their legacy is etched into the annals of history, a testament to the enduring spirit of humanity. Remember, history is not just about the past. It's a mirror reflecting our present, a compass guiding our future. So let's honor those who came before us, for their stories are our stories, their victories our victories. In the face of adversity, let us remember we are resilient, we are strong, we are human, and no chain can ever bind the human spirit. Ever pondered how a period of peace could sow the seeds for one of the bloodiest conflicts in American history? As the antebellum era unfolded, America stood on the brink of immense change. Industrialization began to carve a new landscape while the nation's borders stretched westward, enticed by the allure of expansion and wealth. But beneath this facade of progress, a fierce debate on slavery roared. This era wasn't just marked by America's physical transformation, but also by its moral and ethical dilemmas. The antebellum era, a time of peace, was also the dawn of a looming conflict, the Civil War. Imagine a country on the brink of a new era, its boundaries stretching, its industries booming. As the antebellum era unfolded, America was ablaze with the promise of prosperity. The westward expansion drew countless pioneers eager to stake their claim on the future. Factories sprouted like mushrooms, churning out goods that fueled the nation's growth. This was an age of optimism, an age where the American dream seemed within everyone's grasp. Yet beneath this shiny veneer of progress, a contentious debate brewed. Contemplate a nation grappling with the stark contrast between the ideals of freedom and the realities of bondage. The slavery debate presented a moral and ethical challenge, casting a shadow over America's progress. The North, increasingly industrial and free, clashed with the South, where slavery was integral to the economy and social structure. This tension threatened to fracture the unity of the nation, with each side staunchly defending its stance. This contentious debate was setting the stage for the inevitable conflict to come. Envision a nation on the precipice of a historic conflict, its conscience challenged by the question of slavery. The antebellum era, despite its veneer of peace and prosperity, was a tinderbox of tension. Beneath the surface, a fierce debate over slavery was taking root, sowing seeds of discord that would inevitably ignite the fuse of war. This was not merely an era of transformation, but a poignant preface to a monumental conflict. The antebellum era, thus, was not just a time of peace and progress, but a poignant preface to a monumental conflict. Imagine the southern United States in the early 19th century, where slavery was a deeply rooted institution. A time when the air was heavy with the scent of tobacco and cotton fields, and the echo of a society built on the labor of the enslaved. In this era, Southern leaders and intellectuals held a reluctant acceptance towards slavery, viewing it not as a moral right, but as a necessary evil. They reasoned that the economic benefits, especially in the burgeoning agricultural sector, outweighed the moral qualms. A precarious balance was struck between economic pragmatism and ethical considerations. But this balance was not to last. The winds of change were beginning to stir, and they carried with them the seeds of a profound shift in perception. As the century advanced, so did the views of these southern leaders and intellectuals. However, as the century progressed, there occurred a significant shift in perception. By the mid-19th century, a new narrative started to emerge from the South. Southern intellectuals and leaders, once viewing slavery as a necessary evil, began to champion it as a positive good. 
they began to weave a narrative where slavery was painted not as an institution of oppression, but rather as a civilizing force for the enslaved. They argued that it provided structure, discipline, and even a sense of community for those under its yoke. Furthermore, they contended that slavery was the bedrock of the southern economy, maintaining the agrarian lifestyle that defined their way of life. It was argued that without slavery, the South's economy would crumble, leading to societal chaos. This dramatic shift in perception marked a significant change in the discourse surrounding slavery. However, this newfound justification for what was once seen as indefensible was not unopposed. In the North, a new movement was stirring, challenging the Southern perspective. A wave of moral and social outrage was building, giving birth to the abolitionist movement. Committed to eradicating slavery, the abolitionists were a shining beacon of hope in an era marked by moral ambiguity. Their audacious stand was a stark contrast to Southern leaders' justifications of slavery as a positive good. The abolitionists were unyielding in their belief that no economic or societal advantage could ever warrant the moral atrocity of slavery. They were the voices of the voiceless, the champions of the oppressed, refusing to remain silent in the face of such a profound injustice. They brought the issue of slavery to the forefront of public consciousness, igniting a national debate on the morality and legality of this inhumane institution. This clash of perspectives would eventually lead to one of the most defining moments in American history, the Civil War. In retrospect, the shift in perception during this era was a tale of stark contrasts. Initially, slavery was accepted by Southern leaders as a necessary evil, an unfortunate yet unavoidable aspect of society. However, as time progressed, this view morphed into the belief that slavery was a positive good. This shift was met with the emergence of the abolitionist movement, a powerful force that challenged the morality of such a belief. These contrasting views on slavery would inevitably lead to a conflict that would shape the future of a nation. Have you ever wondered how much of an impact slavery had on the economies of the past? The question may be unsettling, yet it's a crucial part of understanding our history. Slavery was not just a social construct, it was an economic engine, a cog in the wheel of ancient prosperity. Let's journey back to the ancient world, to the grandeur of the Roman Empire and the intellectual prowess of ancient Greece. These civilizations, which laid the foundations for much of Western culture, were heavily reliant on slave labor. The massive plantations that dotted the landscapes, the mines that yielded precious metals, and the colossal public works projects, all were powered by the sweat and toil of enslaved individuals. In Rome, slaves labored in every sector of the economy, from agriculture to entertainment, from domestic service to construction. The economy of the Roman Empire was so intertwined with slavery that it's challenging to imagine one without the other. Similarly, in ancient Greece, slaves were ubiquitous. They were the unseen hands that tended the fields, manned the oars of the warships, and served in the homes of the wealthy. It's estimated that in Athens, at the height of its glory, slaves made up about a third of the total population. But slavery was not just about labor. It was also a status symbol, a display of wealth and power. The more slaves one owned, the richer and more influential one was considered. Slaves were assets, commodities to be bought, sold and traded. And then we come to the slave trade, a major economic activity in itself. Slave trading nations amassed vast fortunes through this horrific human market. Slaves were captured, bought, transported and sold, their lives reduced to mere transactions in a ledger. Thus, slavery was a major economic engine in the ancient world, powering major industries, acting as a status symbol and a form of wealth, and driving the slave trade. It's a somber reminder of how societies can be shaped by economic forces, even those as morally reprehensible as slavery. But what about the more recent past? How did slavery shape the economies of the modern world? The Atlantic slave trade, an unfortunate period in human history, served as the lifeblood of the economies of Europe and the Americas. It was a time when human lives were commodified, with millions of Africans forcibly taken from their homeland and sold into bondage. The profits from this gruesome trade were astronomical. 
and they were used to fuel the growth and development of the economies of the slave trading nations. The plantation economies of the American South, the Caribbean and Brazil were built on the backs of these enslaved individuals. Vast expanses of land were transformed into fields of cotton, sugar and tobacco, all requiring intensive labor. These plantations generated immense wealth for their owners and by extension, the nations they belonged to. But the profits didn't just stay within the plantation economies. They were reinvested into other sectors of the economy, acting as a catalyst for economic diversification. Banking, insurance and manufacturing sectors all benefited from the capital accumulated through the slave trade and slave labor. This influx of wealth and resources played a significant role in sparking the Industrial Revolution, a period of rapid industrial growth and technological advancement. However, the legacy of slavery did not end with the abolition of the trade. Its effects have been far-reaching, extending into the economies of the modern world. The capital accumulated through centuries of slave labor laid the groundwork for the economic dominance of the former slave-trading nations. The wealth disparity between these nations and those in Africa, the source of the enslaved individuals, is a stark reminder of this dark past. The economic structures that were put in place during the era of slavery have left their mark on the economies of these nations. The racial wealth gap, systemic discrimination and economic inequality can all be traced back to this period. So, slavery has left a profound impact on the economies of the modern world from the plantation economies of the Americas to the industrial economies of Europe. And its effects are still being felt today. Have you ever pondered the nature of power and privilege? Where does it originate and how does it transform societies? In the antebellum South, the rise of plantation owners paints a vivid picture of this transformation. These owners with their vast plantations became the embodiment of wealth and authority a status that was largely measured by the number of slaves they possessed. As the South experienced an economic boom, largely due to the exploitation of slave labor, these plantation owners amassed fortunes that were unimaginable for the time. Cotton, tobacco and sugar plantations sprawled across the southern landscape, their prosperity echoing the success of their owners. But this wealth was not solely for show. It served as a tool, a means to an end. It allowed these plantation owners to wield considerable political influence, further entrenching the institution of slavery into the very fabric of Southern society. These plantation owners were the epitome of power and privilege, their wealth built on the backs of the enslaved. At the height of their power, plantation owners reveled in their wealth and authority. These were the men who built palatial homes, symbols of their substantial fortunes and their dominance over the southern economy. Immerse your imagination into the grandeur of these estates, with their sprawling gardens, ornate architecture and lavish interiors, each room a testament to the owner's affluence. Beyond their homes, these plantation owners held a status that was almost royal in its influence. They were the social elite, their names synonymous with wealth, power and prestige. They hosted lavish parties, attended by the most influential figures of their time. Their word was law, their influence reaching far beyond the borders of their plantations and into the political sphere. Many held high-ranking positions in the government, their voices echoing in the halls of power. But let's not forget the foundation upon which this power was built. It was the exploitation of enslaved individuals that fueled this wealth and lifestyle. Every brick in their mansions, every lavish party, every political victory was a testament to the immense suffering endured by countless individuals. It was a power built on the lives and labor of others, a power that was as immense as it was immoral. Yet, as history has shown, power built on exploitation is inherently unstable. But what happens when the very foundation of this power and privilege starts to crumble? The downfall of the plantation owners, a tale as old as time, was precipitated by a series of events that challenged the very bedrock of their existence. The abolitionist movement, a collective effort to end the institution of slavery, began to gain momentum in the mid-19th century. 
This wave of change, propelled by courageous individuals who dared to question the morality of owning another human being, was the first crack in the seemingly impregnable fortress of the plantation owners. Then came the Civil War, a cataclysmic conflict fueled by the contentious issue of slavery. The South, where the plantation economy was deeply entrenched, was pitted against the North, where industrialization was rapidly progressing. The war, a fierce and bloody struggle, shook the nation to its core and marked the beginning of the end for the plantation owners. With the end of the Civil War came the Emancipation Proclamation, a pivotal moment in history that declared the freedom of all enslaved individuals. This was a hammer blow to the plantation owners, as their wealth and power were largely dependent on the exploitation of enslaved labor. The abolition of slavery led to the collapse of the plantation economy, leaving the once mighty plantation owners in a state of despair and financial ruin. In the aftermath of this collapse, the former plantation owners faced a harsh new reality. Stripped of their wealth and influence, they were forced to grapple with a drastically changed social and economic landscape. Many struggled to adapt clinging onto the remnants of their past glory, while others sought to reinvent themselves in this new era. The downfall of the plantation owners serves as a stark reminder that power and privilege built on exploitation are not sustainable. It is a lesson that resonates throughout history and still holds relevance today. The rise and fall of the plantation owners, the economic and political power they wielded, the exploitation of enslaved people, and the eventual collapse of the plantation economy, all these elements come together to paint a picture of a time when power was unchecked and privilege was taken for granted. But as history has shown us, such power and privilege cannot last forever. The downfall of the plantation owners serves as a stark reminder that power and privilege built on exploitation are not sustainable. It is a lesson that resonates throughout history and still holds relevance today.